we are looking at uh, Curbstone uh, 86 at Nauf, a prehistoric Irish passage mound, as uh, Iman Kelly likes to describe it. And I think that's actually a much better description than passage tomb, because passage tomb limits the uh, definition of these mounds to just tombs, when in fact, although they may well have been used as tombs, and indeed cert certainly were, doesn't mean that that's their sole purpose. And as he has pointed out previously in this article, you know, that they could have been, I'd say almost certainly were also sacred temples, you know, specifically related to the sun, uh, the death and rebirth of the sun, um, and and also astronomical observatories because they, they do have astronomical alignments built into them. Douth has a passage aligned with the winter solstice uh, sunset. It also has a passage, possibly the same one, uh, that's aligned to the northernmost setting point of the moon. Um, uh, they call lunar standstill, and then by the way, these things are useful for calculating eclipses. Um, Newgrange has a passage aligned with the winter solstice sunrise. Um, Nauth has a passage aligned with the uh, equinox sunrise, obviously in the the spring and the fall, uh, the point where where the uh, sun rises. Uh, due east um, and La Cru further west uh, but still effectively in the Boyne Valley and, and not as close together as Nauth, Newgrange and Douth are but, but nevertheless uh, not that far away I think somewhere order 40 kilometers away um, it too has a equinox a, a sun, a equinox sunrise alignment and the sun shines on what's called the equinox stone at La Crew, and that equinox stone has rayed sun symbols carved into it, simple rayed sun symbols. It's also got flower-like symbols that I believe were inspired by the flower-like appearance of the totally eclipsed sun. Uh, there's also a cross pattern with a central disk, which I believe is almost certainly a solar cross symbol. Um, and then there's some upturned crescents, including one that appears to have some vertical lines in, in the upturned crescent, you know, kind of like the masts of a boat, um, which you know, may or may not be the case, but, but these are certainly possible solar boat symbols uh, carved into the equinox stone at La Crew. And here we're looking at uh, what Mr. Eamon Kelly, uh, former keeper of antiquities, uh, of Irish antiquities specifically, um, at I believe the National Museum of Ireland, uh, you know, he identifies this as, as depictions of the solar boat. He does not mention solar eclipses. It's possible that he didn't make that connection. Um, but I have identified the whole concept of the solar boat uh, as being inspired by observations of the upturned crescent of the partially eclipsed sun either rising out of a body of water at sunrise or sinking into a body of water at sunset. Uh, this is, I would say, almost certainly, if not you know, obviously, where the concept of the solar boat comes from. Um, and Mr. Kelly has identified these upturned crescents and also inverted crescents above as, as the solar boat. And I, I think he's essentially right. Uh, and whether or not uh, it's the solar boat per se, uh, it's, it's almost a no-brainer that this is a depiction, a very accurate depiction of a uh, phases of a uh, annular eclipse of the sun. It doesn't have the central phase. It doesn't show the ring-like phase, but it, it, it essentially shows something that's identical to the non-central partial uh, phase of, of a annular eclipse. And we'll just go to Google here. I ran a search on 
uh, Google um, for annual eclipse for, for images. So, you know, this shows, you know, how an annual eclipse happens. Basically, the moon is too far away from the Earth to totally obscure the sun. So you get this ring-like pattern. You don't see the sun's corona because the outer ring is simply too bright to allow the corona to be seen. Um, here we see a upturned uh, solar crescent. Uh, here we see different types. Uh, it really, all this is showing is, is that sometimes the moon is so far away that you see a fairly thick uh, solar crescent and then other times the, the moon is closer but still not close enough to totally eclipse the sun so you get a, a thinner uh, crescent and sometimes you have what's called a hybrid eclipse which depending on where you are on the surface of the earth is either a total solar eclipse uh, if you're on the surface of the earth that's you know closest to to the moon and and, and the sun uh, or if you're at either end of the uh, track of the eclipse, in which case it, it, it becomes an annual eclipse. It's like almost a one-to-one -one, uh, size ratio. And in fact, it is one-to-one -one at uh, a couple of points on that path. Uh, um, so that is that. Um, I'm looking for sequential images that clearly are identical or close to identical to what we're seeing. Well, here's one. So let's have a closer look at this. So this image, very nice image of a young boy um, taking a photo. Um, annular solar eclipse over New Mexico. And we can see that, you know, we don't see the whole thing, but we, but we see something that's, you know, pretty identical to what we see on that uh, Curbstone 86. Um, beautiful image. Uh, one of the best images of an annular eclipse uh, I've ever seen. Um, so, we see the, the moon is not large enough to completely cover the sun. In fact, it looks quite small in this one. Um, we see the outer edge here. We even see, see possible part of the chromosphere there. Uh, but, but, but we see essentially a, a, a crescent shape that, that's almost identical to that. You see the similarity here? Bing. Bing. Uh, but let's go back to eclipse images. So this is a NASA science uh, article. Um, okay, so that just opened a fresh page. So let's, let's keep scrolling around here because I, I did want to find a, a sequential image um, that I know is on the internet, or at least was, uh, maybe it got deleted, um, but it's, it's, so here again we, we see the crescent, uh, here we see a sort of a sequential image around the uh, annular eclipse, and then you see the other phases, and, and you can see here these thin crescents that are very similar to what's carved into the stone at Nauth, uh, here's an inverted version. Um, here's the full annular eclipse. Uh, but let's keep going here because this is not the image I'm looking for. There we go. Uh, this isn't exactly the image I'm looking for, but again, compare this. Okay, so we don't have a large. Okay, oh, this is good. So here, here's uh, a sequential image of an annual eclipse. So again, this and this are close to what we're seeing. It's actually thinner. Like the, the actual, the, the stage of the eclipse would be more like when the moon's here. Um, but, but we can see how th this, these crescents here on either side of the, the uh, annular eclipse are, are very similar to to what we're seeing on that curved stone at Nauth, not to mention what are called lunulae. Uh, these are gold crescent jewelry worn around the neck. Um, and uh, basically, trying to think the dates for these things, um, I think they're around 2200 to 2000 BC when most of them were created, and, and most of them are Irish. 
uh, there, uh, there may be some non-Irish. I think actually even the ones that weren't found in Ireland, I think were produced in Ireland. Um, so uh, this is you know about a millennia later, however, than the uh, the uh, passage tomb. So that has to be kept in mind. But but nevertheless, uh, very good reason to believe that so-called lunulae uh, might be better described as solulae. Uh, and uh, I have run this by Mary Cahill, uh, who's also a former keeper of uh, Irish antiquities, and we we're basically on the same wavelength about that. In fact, she calls them sunula. Um, I call them solulae. Uh, but we both we, we agree that, that these crescent images, which are called lunulae uh, in the plural, lunula in the singular, are, are essentially inspired by the partial phases of a solar eclipse. Uh, Okay, this is actually one of my tweets, uh, and this is actually from a while ago, because I knew about the whole solar boat thing for quite some time now, and there was an annular eclipse in Montreal last year, and so I was kind of hoping to get the solar boat in the old port. Um, it was a bit too cloudy to get exactly what I wanted, but I nevertheless did capture, you know, this crescent. Uh, let's take a look at that. Yeah, so... So again, what we're looking at here is is a partial, you know, an annual eclipse. Like I said, all annular eclipses are partial eclipses. But when I say partial, I mean non-central. Before the moon is central with the sun and you get the ring, you get this crescent shape. Um, and I, I think it's not that difficult to see how this crescent shape, especially when it's more upright, you know, either rising out of a body of water or sinking into a body of water would have inspired the concept of the solar boat of the sun god whether it's the solar boat or solar bark of Ra. whoops a daisy oh that's lovely i just flipped a fly into my tea <laughs> well, sorry for the fly there but uh sorry for my tea too um these things happen um yeah a little little uh, interruption in the video there sorry about that um so, uh, yeah, the, the fly was on the rim of my mug of tea, and I hit it to make it fly away, and it fell into the tea. Oh, well. Uh, <laughs> I'm sorry, it's just ridiculous, but, but I know I'm not going to show it on video, but you can hear that's the mug. Fly's not doing too well. Um, so, where were we? So, yeah, I think the solar boat concept, uh, I think it's pretty clear. So this, this tweet dates to June 1st. Oh, sorry, no, June 11th of 21, 2021. So that was the day after the eclipse. Uh, I posted some of my photos. Um, and it says right here, I went to Montreal's old port in an effort to try to photograph the solar bark of Ra flying above the St. Lawrence River. Low clouds prevented that and also made it impossible to capture the solar boat inside the net of the biosphere. Because I, I did actually want to get an image where the, the sun was on the other side of the biosphere. But as you can see, the clouds were very thick. Uh, it didn't really become visible until it was above the level of the biosphere. Um, so didn't get the shots I wanted. And I, I couldn't get... You know, from, from Montreal, I could not get the, the, the sun, you know, right at the water. For that, I would have had to go to Lake Ontario or the ocean. You know, some people on the uh, East Coast in New York and New Jersey, they got some very nice photos. And it looks just like a canoe at, at a certain point because uh, the, the atmosphere sort of flattened out the central part. Uh, along the top of the water and then you had the two prows you know on either end uh, um, so something looking very much like a canoe and yes you know even before I saw this photo I was speculating about uh, you know solar canoe myths in indigenous American uh, mythology and and uh, yes uh, I found a few um, so the, the indigenous American people had their version of the solar boat uh, but in the case of, you know, North American indigenous, uh, people, it was a solar canoe, um, or at least that's how the anthropologists, uh, you know, describe it. Um, and, and you also have solar boat concept in South America, specifically in the Lake Titicaca region where they have the reed boats, 
Um, five minutes left in this, so let's get back to this article. Um, so where were we? Um, yeah, we, we, we read all that, so let's keep going here. Um, extensive evidence for sun worship in Ireland can be demonstrated throughout the prehistoric period and belief in the sun as a deity persisted until the introduction into Ireland of Christianity. Um, in fact, it probably persisted uh, even after Christianity in some parts, uh, as is the case in many other cultures. I mean, you had ancient Egyptian religion persisting until, you know, well after the, the beginning of Christianity. Um, uh, you know, centuries <coughs> after the beginning of Christianity, there, there were still people worshipping uh, the Egyptian gods and goddesses. Um, so, uh, where were we? A contemporary witness to the fact who disapproved of the practice was St. Patrick, who in his Confessio, wrote that all who worship the sun would be punished by the true God. Well, we shall see. <laughs> uh, God is actually responsible for this symbolism, if you believe in a creator of the universe. Um, so, kind of ironic that the creator of the universe would punish people for seeing symbolism in the sun. Oh, and that looks like, is that it? Um, yeah, that looks like the end of the article. I, I thought there was more to it. Maybe we should go through things uh, quickly again, since, oh, we've only got a few minutes left, actually. Um, but yeah, let's see, maybe the key points. Um, da -da 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 -da. Uh, yeah, like, this is very impromptu. Uh, this is not pre-planned. Uh, let's just... Uh, have a look here. Yeah, this part I think is important. Uh, the symbolism of this event, i.e. the uh, winter solstice, uh, was of central importance because Midwinter's Day saw the death of the old sun, by now weak and enfeebled, and the birth of a new vigorous sun that continued to grow in strength until Midsummer's Day. The penetration of the earth by the new vigorous sun restored her to youth and fertility and ushered in a fresh cycle of growth and reproduction upon which the community depended. Um, so as I was saying, you, know, you do have this annual you know, in quotation marks, death, and in quotation marks, rebirth of the sun. Essentially, you know, there's no actual death of the sun, uh, you know, literally or figuratively, uh, in terms of solstice, it's never dead per se, uh, but it is certainly enfeebled. It's at its weakest point. You know, the shortest daylight period and the longest night period, you know, from, from sunrise to sunset and vice versa um so not much time left here so so and as i was saying and i think this is important um my research finds that ancient cultures transposed beliefs inspired by the much more spectacular in quotation marks death and in quotation marks rebirth of the sun during a total solar eclipse onto winter solstice sunsets and sunrises simply because they were annual and predictable and you could do it every year uh you could you could you know have rituals around that area whereas an actual total solar eclipse you might see two or three at most in a 20-year period and then you might wait centuries until another one happened you know so so you know essentially that's what happened it is is beliefs that were inspired by seeing the very spectacular death and rebirth of the sun in a total solar eclipse got transposed onto the winter solstice sunset and sunrise and i see we got about 30 seconds left there's more i could say but i think we've covered a lot of territory this is quite impromptu uh, i sort of did this as preparation to writing something and i wanted to send uh, make this video available to mr eamon kelly uh, so that's what we're going to do i think we're done for today.